Ladies and gentlemen, the show we've all been waiting for. Paranormal Buzz Radio is proud to present I Repeat Paranormal and Friends with your hosts, Kim Purvis and Allison Robinson. Live every Thursday night on Spreaker, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. Be sure to check out their Facebook page, REP Paranormal Busters. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of Paranormal Buzz Radio or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is strictly prohibited. For information on everything Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, ParanormalBuzzRadio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Listener discretion is advised. All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another show. Um, we have another special guest tonight. We have Rebecca from the Cambry House. So welcome. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you great. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. yep we can hear you good. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that you could hear me because I was kind of sitting back there for a minute. Okay. So um, uh, first, I want to start off with just kind of um, getting to know a little bit about you and how uh, the Cambry House came about? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. I am, well, we'll start with what I do. I'm a mail carrier, so that's my day job. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, my grandparents bought the Cambry House in 1979. My grandmother lived about oh, 15, 20 minutes away from it as a little girl. And she went out there. It was an apple farm. And so she picked apples out there when she was a little girl. And then when it went up for auction, she remembered going out there and the fun memories that she had out there. And so she decided she wanted to buy it. And she talked my grandfather into going out there because he wasn't too keen on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then he got out there and he saw it and he fell in love with it. And so he decided he had to have it too. And Grandma thought it looked like it might be a lot of work, but they were both on board. And so they bought the house mm -hmm. and they bought it with the intention of never living in it. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> yeah, which sounds odd. Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... um. The house itself was built in 1867, mm -hmm. and um, it is it has been lived in by the Cambry family since it was built until my grandparents bought it, and it was never extensively remodeled at all. Oh, <laughs> so, so when you go in, it is like it was in 1867. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah, exactly. Like, even the windows are the original hand-blown glass. Oh, so. No. Yeah, so it's more of a museum than a house, mm -hmm. and my grandparents, they loved history, and they loved antiques, so they bought the house with the intention of preserving the history of the house. Oh, very nice. Cool. So they, they filled it up with antiques, and my grandma treated it like a life-size dollhouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, when did they, what, yeah. what year did they purchase it again? 1979. Okay. Gotcha. Um, can you tell us so, a, a little bit more about it? Like, um, where is it located? It is um, halfway in between Nauvoo and Nyota, Illinois on the bluff. So if you're not familiar with Illinois, the part where Illinois bumps out. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, kind of almost in between... Missouri and Iowa, the part where it bumps out, Nauvoo is on the little bump. Okay. <laughs> there. Oh, cool. So, and it's right on the Mississippi River. So oh, the house nice. sits about 300, 
300 feet above the river on the bluff overlooking the river. So um, it's surrounded by trees. You can barely see the river through the trees, but my property does extend all the way down to the river. Oh, very nice. Yeah. All right, let's see. Oh, I'm ready. Darren says he's got some new questions for us tonight. So we'll, well that'll be interesting to see. <laughs> yeah, watch out. He'll Darren's, be loaded. Darren's going to be loaded here pretty soon. <laughs> Darren's always got questions. Oh, yes, yes he does. does. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. So um, um, what all do you do at the Cambry House? I know I've seen, like, you, you do some, like, uh, you must have some, like, painting workshops or something there. Yeah, well, we're opening up as an event center, so um, it's open to host um, weddings. Oh, nice! And like family reunions and that sort of thing. And um, it's kind of we're a little ways off the beat path. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, while I'm trying to convince people it's a great place for a wedding, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, I'm. I'm hosting my own events out there to try and get um, people a chance to come out and see the house and see what it's like. Mm -hmm. So, oh, very um, nice. so yeah, we do painting classes out there. It's kind of like a, a painting party. Um, we've been doing um, French impressionists. Um, the Cambries were uh, immigrants from France, so yeah, we're oh, sticking wow. with the French impression. Oh, kinda, wow. you know, staying with our theme. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I do an open house and craft show on Memorial Day, on the Monday of Memorial Day weekend. Oh, nice. Um, my grandparents, when they had the house, had a craft show every fall in the, through the 80s. They did mm -hmm. it from like 83 to 94, um, and it was a huge deal. Um, I can't do – they did two weekends and like three-day events and – that's a little much for me working a full-time job. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I would say so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, we do the Memorial Day Open House, um, and that is, that's been a fun time just to, it's a chance for people to come, and I do free tours of the house all day, and then we have craft vendors out in the yard, and that's a fun time. Oh, wow. So, and then the other thing, the other thing we do are the ghost tours every fall, and we also do those, um, uh, midsummer. Oh, nice. Okay. So, um, yeah. Can you tell us when do your uh, ghost tours start? Um, the ghost tours this fall will start um, October 25th and 26th. Okay. And then I just I filled that weekend. That weekend is oh, like three people away from being completely booked. Oh wow! So today I opened up bookings for the second weekend, and that will be November first and second. Oh okay, cool, very nice. Um, what what all lies within your um your tours? Like, what all do you do, or what? Um, the regular tour is a two hour tour. Mm -hmm. And it is, oh, and we kind of call it jokingly Ghost Hunting 101. Yeah. <laughs> um, I give a brief, brief breakdown on different types of paranormal activity. And then I, Augusta Paranormal, Chad Derry lead, is the lead investigator and he does our tours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, he brings all their paranormal equipment that they have, you know, the K2, the spirit box, the EMF. Mm -hmm divining rods all you know the yep. thing <laughs> and um so i give like a brief description of the types of tools that we will have there for them to use how they're used to um do a paranormal investigation and then um and then we let them investigate the house they we basically just turn them loose in the house with the equipment and they get to do their own paranormal investigation um like i said chad's there to help guide, uh -huh. you know, as much or as little as they need. And then, and then that's it. I give some history of the house. We, you know, go over some of the activity that we've had there and it's a fun time. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. We got to meet Chad at Farrar. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. He was at Farrar. That's right. When Kelly had her thing there, he come yes, up. Yes. He loved Farrar. <laughs> <laughs> he, he real nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> He is a great guy, and he does he does a great job for us. Um, before we get to any of the questions, uh, how did you realize it was haunted to even start 
investigate. Well, funny story. (laughs) Um, After my grandparents passed away and I bought the house, I didn't think it was haunted. And then... And then I spent the night there. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and two things I realized on this uh, first night in the house. Number one, I don't recall spending the night in the house. Number two, I don't recall being there after dark before. <laughs> Keep in mind, the house has been in my family since 1979. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, oh, my gosh. So... Then um, my daughter at the time was around eight, nine, and and she refused to sleep in any of the bedrooms. It's a three-bedroom house, and she refused to sleep in any of those rooms. Oh. Um, <laughs> Flat-out refusal. That's not going to happen. <laughs> um, and so I ended up sleeping on an air mattress in the middle of a living room floor. Oh a my! Twin size air mattress, mind you, with an eight-year-old. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so, so then, um, my sister was with me, and she had a six-month-old puppy with her, and she slept in a real bed because we do have real beds. <laughs> so she slept in bed upstairs with the puppy, and I slept in the middle of the living room floor. You know, not very well on an air mattress with a kid. And in the middle of the night, of course, the puppy had to go outside to do the thing. And yeah. She walked right by my head with the puppy three times, woke me up because, like I said, she walked right by my head <laughs> and didn't go outside. And, yeah, I did not sleep very well, obviously. And so the next morning when I'm drinking my coffee kind of literally by the kitchen sink and my sister wakes up and comes downstairs, I said, you know, your puppy did really good. She only got up like three times in the night. That's pretty decent you know <laughs> and she's like no we did really good we only got up twice oh <laughs> and she said, no no you didn't you got up three times i heard you and she said no we only got up twice and like there was there's was three times oh my gosh <laughs> we, and we argued back and forth a little bit and then we realized that you know no she really did it twice and i really did hear it three times somebody walking <laughs> by me Oh, and, wow. and then you know we got to think it back on some different things that had happened um when my grandparents had had the house their doors that don't stay shut uh-huh. or don't stay open <laughs> um after basement door we both have problems with and i was a kid when not seen sh- um and so um, there he had i went to high school with him he didn't doing Augusta Paranormal for a little while at that point, and we said, hey, bought this house, you know, we think it might have some activity, I don't know, do you want to come out and just check it out? And he's like, yeah, sure. So, um, so he came out and checked it out, at which point we realized it was super haunted. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> he had one of the most active investigations he's ever had it was uh, it was really cool but oh. yeah that's about the point where we realized it was haunted oh wow yeah we got a trish mcadams in here it says yeah it's trish. hi trish she is a camry descendant she oh. she says it's probably her aunt marjorie it, possibly <laughs> 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 possibility you never know do you never do, know now do you ever do any investigations with them when they're out or do you i'm um, trish has not been oh me personally yeah you personally yeah oh yes i do i do okay because we have some questions here from darren, darren. Okay. <laughs> he's got a whole bunch of loaded um, on here <laughs> um he like he wants to know what are your views on provoking I'm not a big fan of provoking. Um, I think it's kind of disrespectful to the spirit. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, not a big fan of that, personally. I, yeah, I agree with that. Yep, same here. Um, let's see, he's got another one. Of course he does. <laughs> <laughs> There's some new ones tonight, so we got to be prepared. All right, if someone placed a Dybbuk box in front of you, would you be curious and open it or walk away from it? Mm, I'd probably walk away. (laughs) 
I probably would too, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to deal with that. Oh, let's see here. I, uh, what is your device of choice? Hmm. Um, I like the divining rods. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, divining rods or K2? Probably one of those two. Okay. Let's see. I'm not good with my divining rods. I have a habit of moving them myself. Oh. And it's, I'm trying to hold still, but I can't get it to hold still. Yeah. I haven't I haven't used them lately. I think the last time I honestly used them was at Edinburgh a couple of years ago, actually. I don't and we had quite a bit that time with them, but other than that I don't I haven't used them. I guess we haven't gotten them out to try. We've always got them with us, but we always forget, forget about to, them. I know. We take everything else and forget them. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, geez. Uh, Darren wants to know dolls, punt, spike, or dunk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the dolls. <laughs> you can be for me. <laughs> Same. Same here. I, I like dolls. I know, yeah, as we have <laughs> how many watching us right now while we do the show. In this room alone? Yeah, there's probably like, what, 60 in here alone, maybe? <laughs> She's trying to count the dolls. <laughs> Matt says um, that he can find water with rods, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, and when we do the ghost tours, we get a lot of people through that say, oh, yeah, I've used those to find water and walls and stuff. But then you get other people through, and... I, you know, they use them for all kinds of different stuff. Yeah. Um, they can use the, the divining rods over a map to find wealth. Oh, wow. I've never yeah. heard of that. Yeah, I haven't heard of that one. I have not heard of that either, but yeah, they can use the divining rods over a map to find a well. Oh, wow. And, um, and of course, in a graveyard, you can use them to find graves. And I was even told that one of the cemetery taker, caretakers was so good with them that he could tell you if it was a male or a female in the grave. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Oh, that yeah. would be interesting. Yeah. That would be yeah. really <laughs> Just to watch him do it. Yeah. Yeah. So and there are people that have that are really experienced with the divining rods that can do some amazing things with them. Yeah. So. I would not be one of them. <laughs> it's a practice thing, and I think there's some skill to it, too. I'm sure there. I'm, I'm sure, yeah, absolutely. We've uh, got 30 in this room alone. Oh, well, I said 60. <laughs> I double that. <laughs> and you can keep them over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I only have 202. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> only. Well, let's see here. We got another question. Uh, what experience do you want to try in a paranormal field? I don't know if he means. Ex I don't know if he means experiment. Yeah, he means what experiment? It just came through. What experiment do you want um, to try? I uh, the Estes method, where you know one person mm. is listening and another person is asking questions. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, one that I want to try. Uh, heard about it recently. I'm like, hey, that's a great idea. Yeah, I want to try that one. Yeah, that we like to do that one. We've been doing that one. That's that's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really interesting. Let's see here. A lot, a lot of times when we've tried it, sometimes it comes up with the answers we're looking, looking for, for, and sometimes and then sometimes. You could be off the wall on something else, and it's not even matching, but yeah. you just got to keep trying until... Yep. Yeah, I think it take out some of the, um, oh, you know, the reader's intuition, you know, like you want it to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Let's see here. We have another question here. We have one from Trisha. She wants to know if you've been able to find the graves on the property with the rods. Not yet. We are working on it. Um, I have an unmarked grave on the property. Um, it's Eglantine, Cambry. Uh -huh. um, I think Trish seems to think there's another one, um, and that is entirely possible. 
And I, yeah, I still don't know where they are. I'm still working on trying to find them. So, yes, we want to use, want to use try, try the divining rods. Um, uh, we were out there this weekend, tried it again. Um, uh-huh. I've got 30 acres. Oh, so. my gosh. Yeah, that's going to take, <laughs> some, gonna take some, some time. time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we're not talking about a small yard here, and there's some ravines and lots of trees, so, I mean, it's not, it's, it's just an even thing going on here, but um, we're working on it. I really want to get some kind of marker out there, but. Yeah, kind of show respect and everything, and. Yeah. Trish says, I so wished I would have listened better when Dad told us. So sorry. <laughs> well, you know, we're working on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. And Jen B said, you can find whatever you're looking for with diving or the rods. It's all about intent. So, yeah. I just need to work with it more and figure it out. Maybe read up on it a little bit or something. Uh, let's see here. We got Hi. another. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. That's fine. What next question? <laughs> uh, yeah, we got another question here. Uh, what are your visions for the paranormal for the foreseeable future? Uh, foreseeable future? Um, uh, ghost tours, of course. Um, I like doing the ghost tours just twice a year. Um, well, A, I'm still working a full-time job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and... Um, that and I don't want to, you know, just overwhelm people with it. So we do that um, for summer solstice, solstice in mm -hmm. June and then in October because it seems like a natural thing. Um, and yeah. then, um, and then the we experimented with a paranormal conference for summer solstice in June, mm -hmm. um, and that that was a lot of fun. And I think we're going to try and do that again oh. next year. Oh, so nice. that would nice. be. That, yeah, summer solstice at the farm, um, and just a paranormal conference. And like I said, last year it was a lot of fun. We had Kelly McCarvel out there. Oh wow! And yeah, yeah, great time. Yeah, that would be a good time. Kelly, who she's never around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's always off somewhere. I know. <laughs> Well, in June, she was off at my farm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like giving Kelly a hard time. We love yeah. her. We have to. Uh, she was great. We had a great time. We're going to have to do that a lot this weekend at the expo. <laughs> <laughs> I know. She don't get to be there this time. Oh, man. Yeah, I am not going to be at the expo this time, but I will be at the one in November. Okay. So. Perfect. Yeah, this is yeah, this is our first one, so it'll be interesting. I don't know if I'm ready to get up and talk in front of people, so nobody ask me any questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sit there and nod my head. <laughs> I'll need some liquid courage before maybe spike my water bottle. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, so do um, for some people that don't know anything. About this, do you do like overnight investigations or anything like that? Yeah, I'm just starting to do overnight investigations, mm -hmm. um, and that you know they just need to contact me. And, okay, um, perfect. Yep, just contact me, and we can get something worked out. So, um, like I said, I'm just we're just starting to do that. Um, basically, I lost my mind and bought the farm. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, trying trying to support it, you know, and the ghost tours have been one of our biggest things that has support, helped support the farm, so. Yep. Got it. Got to pay those bills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and keep it up. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> we got another question here. Um, is there any object that you would never want to see having an attachment on? Hmm. Any object that I would never want to see have an attachment on, mm -hmm. like like object that I own. <laughs> yeah, maybe, probably. probably. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what he's getting at. Uh, again, I, I'm the doll thing. 
whole yeah. thing attachments that just freaks me out i can't do that <laughs> <laughs> no, you can keep your baby dolls that's, that's so there's not, so not there it, is it safe to say there's no dolls at the camry house no there are no dolls <laughs> <laughs> it seems like the last few places we've been there have been dolls and for some reason dolls are they are mannequins yes and they are like drawn to me like magnets so it's like no <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a no for me <laughs> good deal well, I, I still swear that mannequin at the Granger house was blinking at me, but I... Yeah, I know, it had some wonky <laughs> eyes, and it Weird did. eyes. We had to go back up there and take pictures, because we thought one of them had moved. We seriously thought it had moved. So we were taking pictures, trying to get the right angle, and and uh, comparing it to pictures from earlier that day, and it didn't, but it, it sure looked like it had moved. We were like, oh, yeah, yeah, no. if that thing gets up and whatever, I'm out. No way, Jose. Yeah, out the door with you. No way. <laughs> <laughs> so, I understand you have Indian mounds there, too. You had... I do. I do. Um, I, I'm like Trish, where my grandparents talked about the farm all the time, and I tried to listen, but I don't think I really listened. And so, <laughs> when, I, when I bought it, I got all this stuff. I mean, like, boxes of paperwork on the farm, because... Um, my grandparents had it placed on the National Register of Historic Places in the 80s, uh -huh. and there was a lot of paperwork that they had to go through to do that. And so I got all that paperwork, and then I got all the research that they did. Um, my aunt, Clara Jean, did a ton of research, too. And so anyway, I got, I got a big pack of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, you know, like I said, I, I kind of went a little bit crazy and bought the farm. And um, so then I had to figure out what exactly I'd bought. And so I went through and read all this stuff. And they're in there. My grandma um, had said that there was an Indian burning mound in there. And um, the, I don't remember anything taught about that when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And so, and so there was a picture of a, Depression, depression in the ground with a hat in it, my uncle's hat, and, oh my God. and it doesn't really look like anything. Sorry, my dog's going. That's okay. <laughs> um, so, I'm like, I didn't really know where it was, and um, so we did some ex exploration in the woods. We found it, and it's like a 20-foot circle, 20-foot mm -hmm. diameter circle depression in the ground. And if you do like a web search on Indian burning pit, it comes up with basically nothing. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> there is no such a thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, I mean, the, some of the Indians did like a cremation, but those cremation pits were small, like, you know, a human size, six foot depression. Mm -hmm. And like I said, this is a eight foot circle. Um, so I searched for Indian Indian thing in Hancock County and came up with Indian Mound Cemetery. Indian Mound Cemetery is about three miles as crow flies from my property. Um, and it's, they have made it a public cemetery and there are about 35 mounds. Oh, wow. There. Yeah. And um, all of the mounds in Hancock County, for the most part, in the 1820s were desecrated. All the mounds were dug up, and all the artifacts were taken out of those mounds and sold. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. That is just terrible. It, so um, that's why it's a depression in the ground instead of a mound. Mm -hmm. um, my, like I said, my grandmother called it an Indian burning pit, but she didn't know much about it because... Um, some of the Cambry descendants remembered um, some Indians, Native American people coming and having bonfires and campouts there. Uh -huh. um, and so there were ashes in the pit in that area. Um, and so that's why they called it that. But um, it is actually a mound, a desecrated Indian mound. Um, and so when I discovered this, <laughs> I then decided that... Um, the, the people who own Indian Mound Cemetery had had their um, they had their mounds blessed. They had the local Indian Council come out and bless their Indian mounds, 
Um, and so I contacted our, the local Indian council and they came out to bless my mound and, um, they used the divining rods and they were able to just to realize that there are actually two mounds back to back there. Oh, Oh, wow. Yeah. So they've been blessed. Um, I don't allow investigations out there. Um, Mm -hmm. it's kind of on a remote part of my property Mm -hmm. and, and just kind of a respect thing. So right. Yeah. That's the way it should be. I think. Oh yeah. Any, any cemetery. I I just Mm -hmm. can't investigate a cemetery. But if you're in that area, Indian Mound Cemetery, like I said, is a public cemetery. There are 35 mounds out there that they know of. Oh, wow. Um, it's it's huge. It's really incredible. I um, highly recommend going out there. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. Probably it's, about, about, it's probably about like F&G Mounds up in McGregor. I haven't been there yet. It, it's Indian burial grounds, but they're shaped as animals. Oh, they're Different whoa. animals. There's a bear and wolf. i was up there when I was a little kid. We got, it's owned by the state, uh-huh. and the state park keeps it up. Oh wow, hmm. that's interesting. Yeah, that'd be neat to see. That'd be really cool to see. Yeah, the uh, the, the the Curleys who own Indian Mound Cemetery, they have remounded some of their mounds, and like I said, they worked with the local Indian Council and done some great work out there. It's amazing. So. Okay. All right. Let's see. We got another question here. We got one from Trisha. I believe okay. it's, did Relly ever experience anything supernatural there? Um. <laughs> well, not that I am aware of. Um. Like I said, I know they had problems with those doors opening and closing the basement door, especially because a lot of times during the craft shows, I was stationed by the basement door to make sure it stayed shut. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little kid, you know, like 10, 11, and my job was to stand by that basement door and make sure it stayed shut. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's funny. <laughs> you know, that door, that door closes and it latches. I will say there is a trick to latching it because I know this trick because that was my job. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that sort of thing, like I said, that's gone on for years. The attic door, I can't tell you how many times. You know, we've gone in the house and the door, the attic door has been open. Um, and that was, I know that was happening when my grandparents owned it because I remember them talking about it. You know, oh, that door's open again. I know I shut it, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, like I said, I know that sort of stuff was going on. I don't believe I ever heard really my grandfather, or my grandmother refer to anything being supernatural. Now, I will say that um, grandma called it enchanted a lot out there. Oh, uh-huh. um, and that's, yeah, that's one of the things, like when she was talking to the people her age that came out there, um, when they were kids to the apple orchard, they all said the same thing that it felt like oh. it was enchanted, um, oh, uh-huh. that there's, there's a sense of peace when you go out there that just uh, almost every single person out there remarks on it, that it's just so peaceful. Well, just looking it's at the just, pictures that you post and things of the you know, different areas out there. It just, yeah, it looks so nice out there and just so relaxing and quiet. And I don't know. It just, it just has that vibe to it when I look at the pictures. So, um, yeah, it is, it is, it is, like I said, it's one of those things that every single person, almost every single person will say when they come out there, it's just, it's just so peaceful here. And it's, it's really neat. Um, and yeah, grandma, grandma, a lot of times will re- refer to it in the stuff as being, being enchanted. She compared it to like a brigadoon because when she was, hit, I mean, we're off the beaten path. Uh-huh. I've never been out there. Anybody who's been out there will tell you we're off the beaten path. <laughs> <laughs> she said when they were kids, you know, the signs would go up for the apples in the fall and they'd follow the signs out there. They'd get their apples and have their wonderful time. And then the signs would go down and just like, you couldn't find it again. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Uh, Trish said when we were talking about the Indian burials, she goes, she didn't she didn't know about them either. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one who totally missed that part of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see here. We got a, we had another question here. Um, OK, Darren's got a question. He this is kind of just off the subject a little bit. What are your views on Bigfoot? 
It could be. Um, there's a lot of woods, and never know. That is true. I mean, you don't know, and that's always something that I wanted to kind of try to do. I don't even know where to begin to try to look for that, but just to see, it might be kind of fun to try it out, and you never know where they're where they're at. So. Yeah, you know, you if you would ask me 15, 20 years ago, I would have told you there aren't any bobcats in Illinois, but uh -huh. um, apparently there are bobcats in Illinois, and I opened it up where you could do bobcat hunting because oh, there, wow. I guess there's plenty. Oh, <laughs> wow. Holy cow. I didn't realize that. I didn't either. Yeah, I didn't either, but apparently there are quite a few. Um, uh, the University Western has um, tracked them with collars and stuff, and there are actually quite a few around here. Cool. I had no idea. So, yeah, hmm. who knows? Bigfoot could be out there. Yeah, you don't know. You just never know where he's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, let's see here. Have you done Have you done any other investigations or just the Cambry House? I have done a lot of other investigations, actually. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, oh, gosh, like 13 years ago um, for my birthday, <laughs> one of my girlfriends got, bought me a ticket for a ghost tour, and um, that was in Macomb, Illinois, with Garrett Moffat, and... Uh -huh. Yeah, I went on that ghost tour, and I was totally hooked. So I've been doing investigations for quite a while. Um, but I investigated a lot of different places. Garrett and I ended up becoming pretty good friends, and uh -huh. I've investigated a lot of different places. So um, well, yeah, lots of like Macomb, Hannibal. Um, the last time I got married, I got married at Rock Cliff Mansion in Hannibal, which is haunted. Oh, wow. <laughs> Everybody's oh. familiar with Rockcliffe. I got married there. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, part of part of the wedding package, you get to stay overnight. And my husband was absolutely terrified. <laughs> he didn't want to leave the room the entire night, and I thought we were going to get get to investigate, and that, that did not happen because he was absolutely terrified. Oh anyway. bummer! <laughs> I would have been like, put your big boy pants on. Let's go. <laughs> let's go that's what I would have been like put your big boy pants on <laughs> he had to go outside and smoke and he was just like shaking and oh I my gosh and go with him the whole time because he just could not go out by himself and it was just, that'd, it was, be, that'd it was, be my husband <laughs> <laughs> that would be my husband he he don't mind I do it but leave him out of it <laughs> Okay, so since you've done other ones, out of those, yes. what do you think is the scariest location you've ever investigated? Mm, let me think about that a minute. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say the name of this place. That's fine. Um, okay. Because it's not open for public investigations. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm trying to think of how to explain it to you. Um, it's basically a ghost town. At one point, it was a town, and now it's no longer. Oh, wow. Um, and so, so we trekked out in the middle of the night. You have to walk probably close to a mile down a lane to get to this old abandoned town where there's no buildings left anymore. And oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, we had permission to go. Uh -huh. Right. We got permission to investigate, which I think we were one of the very few people who got permission to investigate this location. And so we walked down this lane about a mile in the dark with flashlights. <laughs> 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 and um, to this abandoned town in the middle of the woods. And it was, it was, um, there was a vibe there that was just not right, and we ended up not staying very long. Oh, I think we were gosh. only out there about an hour or so before I was like, yeah, and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and it, you know, it's hard to describe because we didn't really experience anything out there, but there was there was a vibe out there that just wasn't quite right. That didn't feel right. Yeah. We weren't supposed to be out there, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Okay, we got another one. All right, if you come across a full body apparition, who would you want it to be and what would you say? 
Well, I'd probably... I'd probably do the same thing I do when I see a snake and jump and scream, so... (laughs) 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 I mean, I'm not really sure I'm going to be able to ask a question. (laughs) Every time I see a little garter snake, I jump and scream. So, I mean, it's not like... I I know the garter snake's not going to hurt me, but I still jump and scream. So, I'm pretty sure that's what's going to (laughs) happen. So we'll answer that question. Um, who would I want to be? Um, I don't know. Um, I'm. I know we've seen a couple at the farm, or people have said they've seen a couple. I haven't personally. Um, one they said they've seen is my grandfather. Um, and that would be awesome to see him again. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one that they've seen out of the farm is Anglantine. Um, and that would be cool too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think if I got, you know, fortunate enough to see a full body, I think I would, would not care exactly who it was. I think I'd just be like, Whoop. although I'm pretty sure I'd jump and scream. So I don't think I would ask them anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't jump and scream. I'd probably go, uh, 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 and just freeze. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I would do, honestly. Hopefully not scream like I do when dolls go flying, but you never know. <laughs> dolls have a little more creepiness to them, I think, than if I saw. I mean, I've seen, I've seen dark figures in my room growing up when I was younger. They used to stand by my bed. But, you know, they didn't have a face or anything to them. They just had the shape of a human. That's all I could see. And I mean, that kind of freaked me out when I was little, but after a while, I guess I had conversations with them and sometimes we'd be talking in a different language, my mother said. So I have no idea, but to see one now and if it looked like an actual human, I don't know how I would react, honestly. Uh, I really wouldn't know either yeah. until I like, I'm not positive, but yeah. knowing how I react to the garter snake, I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Trissa said she has seen one. Her brother and her sister saw one, but neither were at the farm. Ah, interesting. Mm-hmm. And let's see here. We have another question. What is on your bucket list? Oh, bucket list. Um, mm-hmm. well, um, Stonehenge, of course, mm-hmm. naturally. Oh, I mean, def- yeah. yeah. That would be neat. That would be really cool. Um, I almost did this one, um, Sleepy Hollow. Um, the the Van Tassel Homestead is like a, um, a a house that you can tour, and I really want to do that. Uh-huh. And my sister and I went to Sleepy Hollow, and we were there, but it was closed. Oh, that stinks. Uh, yeah, because I used to would be open because I went there, right? But apparently we went like shortly before Halloween and they closed getting ready for Halloween. Uh-huh. I don't know. Uh. Long story short, I am a descendant of the Van Tassels. The Sleepy Hollow story was written about my family. Um, they were friends with Washington Irving. And so anyway, yeah. Oh. I want to go see it. Oh, yeah. that It would be cool. It'd be cool to see. Oh, let's see here. Um, I'm just reading this. We got a one here. I'm just trying to scroll to see if I make sure I get it all. Okay, Trisha says, "Do you know where the is it voucher property yeah. is relation to the house?" Yes, I do. Um, the voucher property is. Um, just north of the house. Um, the foundation is still there. Um, but yeah, it's just north of the house. Um, cause she, along the road. Cause she says that Allison thinks that if there were any, it would have been in that direction regarding the Indian mounds. Mm. Interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, Fushi. I don't know how to say it. She said Fushi? Is that how you say it? Instead of voucher? Is it Fushi? I don't know. Oh, uh, that, 
I, that would probably be the friend's pronunciation. Oh, gotcha. Okay. 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 That's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I have no You're idea. Saying probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she says. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good deal. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the whole French pronunciation. I took some French classes, but it's been a while. <laughs> Um, let's see, we have another question rolling in here again. We've got a lot of questions tonight. What is the one movie that has scared the shit out of you? <laughs> okay, so I will admit I don't do jump scares. So I don't watch scary movies, like, at all. Like, okay, I watched Kindergarten Cop, <laughs> and when that there's a part where this owl flies out and oh. I watched it in the theater and I screamed so loud. The whole <laughs> entire theater turned and stared at me. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> During kindergarten cup. Oh so, my gosh. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I don't do scary movies. <laughs> uh, yeah, not really my deal. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's great. Trish uh, says that was my grandmother's place on that place. Yes. yes. It was. Okay. My chat's getting all wonky on me here again. We haven't missed any. I'm watching. Okay, perfect. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything via the computer. And I have it up on my phone just so, because sometimes my phone kicks me out and then I don't know where I'm at with questions. So I just want to make sure I don't forget and anybody. And the computer's slower than your phone. Yeah, I know. Well, sometimes they come through faster on the computer than my phone. So I have no clue. I get confused sometimes. And then I forgot that this is a touchscreen uh, screen on the computer. So I'm sitting here trying to thumb through and she's like, you can just touch the screen and scroll it. It's a lot easier. <laughs> Jen B says, Fuchi is stinky in Spanish. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh boy. That's great. I'll have to remember that one for work. There you go. There you go. Oh, I should, I should say that to my daughter. She's taking a Spanish class now. I don't remember a whole lot of Spanish. I took four years of it and then a year in college and I don't remember any of it. I know you need to because we get Spanish people talking to us when we're at Edinburgh and we don't know what they're saying. Oh no, yeah that's true. I I can make out bits and pieces but that's about it. Oh hello this just scrolled everywhere crazy. <laughs> I just jumped everywhere just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Nope I'm not. Okay perfect. Um, So let's see here. Have you, what is like, uh, have you caught any like EVPs or anything like that or most memorable experience that you've had on an investigation? Well, um, oh gosh, there's been a lot of experiences on investigations. Um, probably some of the most memorable were um, how like that very first investigation with Chad. Um, he came up the very first time and I was giving him the tour of the house. And of course we just bought it. And, um, my grandparents hadn't been in very good health for like the last six years. Mm -hmm. So people really hadn't been out for a whole lot. And so I'm giving him the tour of the house and this is April. And it's one of those cold rainy Aprils where it's just, it's not freezing, but it's cold. Mm -hmm. And so I'm giving tour and you know doing the whole walkthrough thing and I am freezing I have my winter jacket on inside the house mm -hmm. and the furnace is running I hear it but I am literally freezing and I kept thinking through the whole tour I'm thinking the furnace is done I'm uh -huh. gonna have to buy a new furnace it's gonna be our new first purchase you know oh, oh my gosh the furnace you know yeah yes yeah. <laughs> oh my kind gosh. of freaking out, you know, the back of my house the whole time because I'm literally shivering, shivering inside the house in my winter jacket. Oh gosh! And, and so Chad pulls out the digital thermometer to check the temperature of the house, and my thermostat was set at 60 degrees, and the temperature of the house was 58. Oh, wow. So I'm like, well, wait a second. The, my furnace is working. Why am I shivering? Because I'm literally, my arms crossed, winter jacket on, shivering. And so 
he'd take the digital thermometer and directly behind me from about my waist down, the temperature was about 22 degrees and it kind of dipped into the negatives. Oh, oh wow. Ooh. The cold spot was that solid and that cold. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> And um, I stayed through part of the investigation, and then that solid cold spot um, stayed close to me mm -hmm. through the whole thing. The whole time I stayed there, oh it was um, it'd go away, it would come back, it would kind of be in front of me, kind of behind me, but it was that solid cold spot that, like I said, registered around twenty two and kind of dipped into the negative several times. Oh wow, that's crazy! No way, Jose. <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that was like, like I said, that was the very first investigation where we we're like, um, yeah. So yeah, this is haunted. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that went beyond that. I think it might be too. Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. One of the funnier stories. We had problems with the door locking and unlocking. Mm -hmm. So I had a key. My sister had a key. My cousin's daughter who claims for us, she had a key. My mom has a key. And um, my cousin's daughter's key quit working. She couldn't get in the house to clean. Her key wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. my, key, my key works just fine. Um, then my sister's key to quit working. My mom's key doesn't work. My key works great. I can get in the house anytime I want, but nobody else can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, they want okay, you there. So an old, and an old, it's an old block. I mean, my granddad put it on. So, uh, you know, it's been there for a while. We'll go ahead and change it out. You know, it's, it's time. To change out the lock, right? Mm -hmm. We still have the same issue. <laughs> Oh my the gosh. Lock works for some people and not for others. Oh um, wow. My mom's been brought out of the house a few times. And then like there was this one day where you know, it's about a forty five minute drive for me to get out to the farm. Mm -hmm. So by the time I get out there I usually have to pee and I've got a gate with a lock, <laughs> you know. And I get out there and I've got to pee really bad. <laughs> and of course I'm unlocking the gate in the rain while I have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. And so I'm kind of like flying up the lane to get to the house and I get to the house and the door is wide open. I'm like, what? Woo! And you know, somebody had been out to the house earlier in the day. And so I assumed they left the door open. For yeah. Me. And so I texted him and said, Hey, thanks for leaving the door open to me for me. I had to pee so bad. That was so nice. I greatly appreciate it. And they texted me back. I locked into that door. Oh, Gave wow. Shot. Oh, <laughs> They were helping they you. Out. They knew you had to go, so they were trying to help you out. That's right. They opened the door for me. <laughs> they didn't want you to have an accident. That's right. That's right. Hey, they knew I had to go. They opened the door for me. So yeah, it's kind of it's kind of one of those funny things where yeah, the door the, they let people in who they want in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Trisha wants to know if you ever go out there at night, and if so, do you go alone? Um, uh, yeah, I go up there at night. I have been up there at night alone. Um, I don't think there's anything out there that's, you know, there's nothing out there that's creepy, scary. You know, it's just kind of ghosts that might scare me sometimes, but I don't. There's nothing out there that's gonna hurt me. So, um, yeah, I've been out there at night. Um, I've been out there by myself at night. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of a little unnerving sometimes, um, but you know, not not too bad. Yeah, I know. You're talking to the person who got scared and screamed at kindergarten cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if they're opening... But if they're opening doors for you, they trust you, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, let's see. We got another question here. Um, famous haunted houses like the Amityville or locations that are considered hoaxes, do you agree with the public that they are or would you investigate it to find out yourself? I would investigate it to find out myself. Um, I think sometimes people 
want it to be haunted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, sometimes those stories, like urban legends and things, mm-hmm, they get right. kind of blown out of control. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would want to personally investigate it myself or have um, somebody that I know investigated it, um, you know, mm-hmm. that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes some of those things get blown out of proportion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. I definitely agree. And Trish says you're brave for going out there by yourself. <laughs> I have felt brave, very brave going out there by myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm getting the hiccups coming on here. Oh. oh, let's see here. Just making sure I'm not forgetting anybody's questions here. Yeah, we, we don't want to miss anybody. Yep. Anyone have any last questions before we start wrapping up things here in a couple minutes? We've been on for our hour. It goes so by so fast. I know it does, actually. I couldn't believe I had to ask him, like, what episode are we on? Are we on 27? And I had to go back and look on our speaker. I'm like, heck, we're on 28 already. (laughs) Doesn't seem like we've done 28 of them already, but, you know, I'm still learning. We're it's saying, been cool having Church Cambry in here asking questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. What is it? What is it specifically that makes you think? I don't know how to say the name is active. The little girl that passed. Oh, Eglin Yes. Um, yeah. I, I we're hoping I pronounce that right. <laughs> um, a, a lot of the behavior at the house has been childlike behavior. Um, like, we'll be upstairs, there'll be a knock downstairs, everybody will run downstairs, there'll be a knock upstairs, there'll be a run upstairs, and, you know, <laughs> kind of hide and seek type things. Mm-hmm. Um, that that cold spot I talked about being small behind me, um, and that night it was really like a mom, you know, a kid hiding behind their mom, mm-hmm. um, you know, and um, some of the dividing rod sessions and stuff, she's confirmed that she's eglantine. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, that, of course, she's buried on the property somewhere. Uh, oh, let's see. We got one more question here. If you had to a chance to investigate the Vatican, would you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh. Um, let's see here. And then uh, Trish says, wow, very cool. And thank you for sharing. So, hey, yeah, we've had, I mean, we had quite a few people in here tonight. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through some shout outs here real quick before we wrap things up. Um, let's see. We had Darren. We had Matt. We had Trisha. Um, we had Jen B in the house. We had um, Mom Pat was in here earlier. Hey, Mama Pat. <laughs> um, let's see. I was in chat. I think, I think I got everybody that was in here tonight. Great crush questions, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> he comes up with some good ones. <laughs> he does. Um, so I just like to thank everybody who was in chat tonight. Thank you for everybody who was not in chat, but was listening. We appreciate you all. So thank you for listening to us every Thursday night. And we'd like to thank Rebecca for being on the show tonight. Um, we had a lot of information. Oh, uh, Adam, Adam, Adam just got into chat here, Adam Tillery. And he said, you might find a lot of ghosts roaming around at the Vatican. <laughs> Oh, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, that was great. Well, thanks, Adam, for joining into our chat here. Um, and thank you, for Rebecca, for being on our show. So, everybody, uh, where can they find information on the Cambry House? Sure. Um, CambryHouse.com. Um, on www.CambryHouse.com is the website. Um, Cambry House and Farm. Um, I'm on Facebook. It's Cambry dot house on Instagram. So. All right. So if you search for Cambry, you should find hopefully the farm. Right. So. <laughs> yes. Yes. Everybody check it out. It's, I, I enjoy looking at your pictures on Instagram when you post them. So, 
Um, uh, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. So everybody, thank you for joining us tonight. And thank you, Rebecca. And um, we will be on next Thursday. What is next Thursday? Next Thursday. Oh, we have the, we have the Southern Gypsies on next Thursday. Yeah. So tune in for that. I'm sure that's going to be a crazy show. So. Aren't they always? <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Thank you for listening to REP Paranormal and Friends. Be sure to check out Kim and Allison on Facebook at REP Paranormal Busters. 